Hey, church leaders, church members, <laughs> I have just one word for you. And this one word encapsulates the main point of Christ's high priestly prayer and the main priority of equipping evangelists. Any idea what this one word is? Because God commands us all as Christians to get it together and live the word. And that's one of many reasons why we host our upcoming Equipping Evangelists Conference for Church Leaders. And in this episode of the podcast, I'll open Ephesians chapter 4 to reveal the one word and to continue a pre-conference mini-series that every evangelistic church simply must hear, whether you're coming to our conference or not. This is The Equipping Evangelist, a podcast that equips your entire church for evangelism together. My name's Corey McKenna, and after years as a pastor and evangelist in the local church, I founded an equipping ministry called The Cross Current, and now this podcast, all to share my experience and expertise with you. Well, Equipping Evangelists is our ministry equipping evangelists in their own churches to equip their own saints for the work of gospel ministry together. And the Equipping Evangelist Conference facilitates this exclusive in-person opportunity for church leaders and for their Equipping Evangelist candidates to both explore and really experience the impact of Equipping Evangelism together. Now, because both the role and the responsibilities of equipping evangelists is very, very new to many, if not most, church leaders, I'm hosting this pre-conference mini-series that every evangelistic church simply must hear. And to set the table for the series, last week I taught through the three uses of the word evangelist in the New Testament. Now, the first two are describing the work of an evangelist. And the work of an evangelist is simply a Christian sharing the gospel with a non-Christian. And every Christian is responsible to do that work, to do the work of an evangelist simply as an act of worship unto our king. But here in Ephesians chapter 4, God establishes the really the gospel leadership role of an equipping evangelist who is really a disciple maker of evangelism in the local church. And so in this episode, I'm kind of starting a deep dive into Ephesians chapter 4 to talk about the one word that encapsulates the main point of Christ's high priestly prayer and the main priority of the equipping evangelist. And what's the word, one word? Enough, Corey. What's the one word? Well, the wait is finally over. So <laughs> let's read Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. It says this, I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity. Bam! That's the one word. Remember that word? The unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. That's the one word. Unity. Unity. Say it with me. Unity. This one word encapsulates the main priority of the equipping evangelist. Unity. And really in tandem with the other equipping roles referenced here, we're going to get to that next episode, an equipping evangelist maintains, as it says, the unity of of the Spirit. That is really the main point, or really the, the big idea of this entire passage. It may be even be the section header in your Bible. Mine says, unity in the body of Christ. Now, as verse, verse 4 says here, there is one 
body, one spirit, one God. We are, present tense, unified in Christ. We've been declared as one by God today. Okay, that's really, really important theologically that we grab a hold of that. But here's the main reason that maintaining that unity is so important in the context of the local church and gospel witness. In verse 1, Paul starts by saying, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Now, what walk is Paul talking about here. Well, walk is a term really used frequently in the New Testament to refer to daily conduct and habit. My walk as a follower of Jesus Christ is my daily conduct and habit. So what Paul's saying is that by God's grace and for God's glory, you, me, we, we together are to be Everything the Lord desires and empowers us to be every day, he allows us breath. And we do that primarily by maintaining unity in Christ. Christians, this is no small thing. And because the equipping evangelist is given by God to equip the saints in their churches to be Christ's witnesses together... Not only does unity in Christ lead to God-honoring walk, as Paul has clearly taught us here, but unity in Christ leads to God-honoring witness as well. You see, that's why Jesus, on the night of his betrayal, prayed this to his Father in his high priestly prayer. Listen to this. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are are one, I and them and you and me, that they may become perfectly one. That's like Paul says here in Ephesians 4. And, and why does Jesus want us to become one, unified together? Here's why. So that the world may know that you sent me and loved them even as you loved me. Wow, catch this Christian, our unity of the Spirit bears witness to Christ in the world, or of Christ, probably better said, of Christ in the world. And as we close, let me try to illustrate how this all comes together in gospel witness. You know, one, one mentor of mine has compared our witness to the world as like the moon to the earth. Go with me on this. The moon to the earth. You see, we as the church are a lot like the moon. If you think about it, the moon is really just a ball of dirt that reflects sunlight to the world. Isn't that true? That's all the moon is. And we as Christians, as blood-bought followers of King Jesus, we're really just all one big ball of sanctified filth aren't we? Yes, we are. And we've been brought together by the blood of Christ, lifted high into heavenly places by the creator of the universe for the sole purpose of reflecting his sun, S-O-N, light to our world. And in the same way, the more unity we have together, the fuller the moon and the brighter and the clearer the reflection of Christ to our world. So when we walk together as one unified in Christ, and when we witness together as one unified in Christ, in the strength and in the power and in the word, the Holy Spirit, what he does is when we walk that way, when we witness that way, the brighter the body of Christ looks to the world around us and and the clearer the gospel of Christ sounds to the world around us. And through us together, the world knows that Jesus Christ was sent. Wow. And that's why if you desire to see your church both unify and multiply in the gospel, and I hope you do, you probably wouldn't have been listening to me 
Certainly not for this long. But if you desire that, you won't want to miss the rest of this pre-conference mini-series. Because on the next episode, I'll basically define the second responsibility of an equipping evangelist according to Ephesians chapter 4 toward unifying and multiplying your church in the gospel. Wow. But until then, do you have any questions that I could help answer about evangelism and your church? I hope you do. To submit those, go to theequippingevangelist.com. Click on that Got Questions, Get Answers button. Send those on in. And finally, will you also please subscribe to and share this podcast with other like-minded followers of Christ? Click the subscribe button below to listen every week and to get your entire church equipped for evangelism together and then share this podcast with all of your Christian contacts to multiply gospel ministry in and through the local church. And may God bless you and your church as you get equipped for evangelism together.